On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Jewish Federation of San Antonio and the Holocaust Memorial Museum Commission, I'd like to welcome you to the Maxim Cohen For Hope for Humanity Educator Award presentation. This award is presented every two years at the For Hope for Humanity Museum Benefit and is awarded to a K-12 educator who has demonstrated the moral courage of an upstander in defiance of prejudice and discrimination and in support of humanity. Tonight, we'd like to thank our generous sponsors who made this program and the work of the Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio in South Texas possible. The Champions for Hope for Humanity, the Mays Family Foundation. The Ambassadors for Hope for Humanity, Belvin Roofing Company, Chris Cheever, Gene Cheever, and the Griefy Family Foundation. And the Hope for Humanity Advocates, James R. and Judy C. Adams Fund, Alamo Aircraft Charitable Fund, J. Estella Holland Avery, Center for Medical Humanities and Ethics, Nancy and Charles E. Cheever, Jr., Dawson Family Foundation, Gentry Family Fund, Health Family Foundation, Holtzman Family Foundation, Harry Levy, Leslie Seligberg, Ronit Sherwin, Michael Swanson, and Richard Planto Families, the NRP Group, New Star Energy, Matthew Starr, Valero, Renee and Marty Wender. I would also like to share a special thank you to Mark and Sharon Greenwald for generously funding this award. Because of you, we can celebrate the achievements of the Maxine Cohen Award recipients tonight. Now, I'd like to introduce Lisa Barry, the 2018 recipient of this award, who will present the 2020 Maxine Cohen For Hope for Humanity Educator Award. Good evening, I'm Lisa Barry. I'm excited to be here with you virtually for this year's Maxine Cohen Hope for Humanity Educator Award. I was the inaugural recipient of this award in 2018, and since then, my life has changed directions substantially. The award gave me a springboard in which to work with true humanitarians, such as Jeannie Wynn, Varda Ratner, Sharon Greenwald, and Senator Jose Menendez taking Holocaust education in Texas a step further with the passing of Senate Bill 1828. Holocaust Remembrance Week. Now all the children in grades K through 12 in the state of Texas will be able to learn about the importance of tolerance, empathy, unity, and the dangers of silence and apathy. None of this would have been possible had Maxine Cohen not spearheaded Holocaust education in Texas and San Antonio back in 1975. Thousands who pass through the Holocaust Memorial Museum, San Antonio, each month have Maxine Cohen to thank for keeping history alive. It reminds me of a quote from Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Fight for things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. This is certainly what Maxine has done. This year's recipient of the Maxine Cohen Hope for Humanity Educator Award is a teacher from Northeast ISD who has accumulated multiple awards for her extraordinary work in advocacy, including the Trinity Prize for Excellence in Teaching, Teacher of the Year, and the NEISD Superintendents Award. She spends her entire school year fostering in her students a knowledge of what it means to do the right thing, including lessons about Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, Native Americans, poverty, social inequities, and nine weeks of Holocaust and genocide studies. She demonstrates with her lessons how to be an upstander in your actions. The Jewish Federation of San Antonio and the Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio are proud to announce the 2020 recipient of the Maxine Cohen Hope for Humanity Educator Award, Sheridan DeCastro. Thank you, Lisa, for your kind introduction. I want to begin by thanking the Jewish Federation of San Antonio and their Director of Jewish Engagement and Learning, Julie Zucker providing our community with the Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio and the many educational materials and resources it provides. I also want to 
to thank Mark and Sherry Greenwald for their generous sponsorship of this award. This important museum would not exist if not for the dedication and passion of this award's namesake, Maxine Cohen. On behalf of local educators and students, thank you, Maxine, for all that you have done to ensure that this museum provides an important place to remember those lost, to honor those who survived, and to educate the public. Because of your efforts, the educators and students of South Central Texas will never forget the stories and lessons of the Holocaust impressed upon our hearts. As a teacher of language arts, my subject spans all curriculum areas. This provides me with opportunities to use literature that exposes students to multiple perspectives on historical as well as current events and issues beyond what is often covered in a textbook. I encourage students to examine these events and issues critically and then communicate their insights in their own writing. From these exercises, they learn to use their words carefully and responsibly. Our Holocaust Literature Unit is incredibly impactful in helping them to understand just how powerful words can be. Educating our youth about the Holocaust is more important and has for more reasons than I have time to share. So tonight, I will touch on a few of the lessons that have profoundly impacted my students. The Holocaust did not happen overnight. Many students are surprised to learn it was part of a calculated process spanning years. Systematic campaigns of propaganda, fear, hatred, anti-Semitism, and dehumanization were features of this process. It is essential that this generation of students recognizes these features in order to act before it's too late. A single person was not responsible for the tragedies of the Holocaust. Individuals and groups in power orchestrated the wars, but neighbors, co-workers, classmates, and average citizens were bystanders. Today, students must understand that complacency is complicity. Genocide did not end with the Holocaust. The fires of hate continue to burn around the world, fueling the murder of millions of innocent people. This generation must know that to extinguish these fires, it is the responsibility of every individual to stomp out what might seem to be even the smallest of flames. Whether it be standing up to the schoolyard bully or condemning the hateful words coming from the mouths of our own family or friends. I will end my remarks tonight with the same words I leave my students with at the end of our Holocaust Literature Unit. A quote from Holocaust survivor author, professor, and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Elie Wiesel. We must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Sometimes we must interfere. Thank you. Congratulations, Sheridan. I know all of your colleagues, students, and parents in the Northeast Independent School District are celebrating with you this evening. As Lisa mentioned, last year the Texas Legislature adopted Senate Bill 1828, mandating a week of Holocaust education for every grade every year. This bill was made possible through the support of dedicated museum volunteers and educators from right here in San Antonio. Public schools in Texas will teach the Holocaust in classrooms this upcoming January for the second annual Texas Holocaust Remembrance Week. The Holocaust Memorial Museum of San Antonio is proud to be one of the organizations approved by the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission to provide Texas teachers with resources to teach this curriculum during this important week. In addition to the programming we provide during Texas Holocaust Remembrance Week, the museum is currently hosting virtual tours docent-led virtual question and answer sessions, recorded survivor testimony, teacher resource guides, traveling exhibits, 
educational trunks, and much, much more on our website. The museum will also be hosting three teacher workshops this fall to prepare educators with the tools they need to teach the lessons of the Holocaust at each grade level. You can learn more about each of these programs at the museum's website at hmmsa.org. None of this critical work is possible without the support of our community. We're asking each of you tonight, now that you know about this incredible resource that exists right here in our community, what will you do? With who will you share the museum's resources? To support fighting hatred, prejudice, and apathy through Holocaust education, we're asking you to please make a donation this evening at hmmsa.org. Thank you again for joining us this evening to honor the work of Sheridan De Castro, Maxine Cohen, the Museum's Commission, and all those who are passionate about Holocaust education in our community. Please tune in on Facebook Live this evening at 7 p.m. for our featured program, an interview with Pulitzer Prize winning author Eli Saslow, who will discuss his book, Rising Out of Hatred. Thank you again, and good evening.